Malcolm Nance. Good morning, Malcolm. Good morning, Stephanie. How are you? <laughs> I am. You are, today? You are uh, well, I, I'm told that you are a serial fabulist by uh, Julian Assange. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I'm actually waiting to put my response tweet out later today, responding to Rapey McRape face. Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh. Rapey McRaperson. Well, wow. Yeah. Uh, that... you, know, you know, I mean, come on. You know, what I really want to pass to him is that Snowden has a room closet to spare. And so, <laughs> what more can we say? Yes. All right. So, listen, we, uh, uh, this is, there's a lot going on. The uh, translator from the Trump Tower meeting uh, is going to meet with the House panel, correct? Uh, I mean,. There are so many things happening at once. You talked about, you tweeted Trump meeting ex-CIA director Jim Woolsey, who turned uh, Flynn in on the Turkish kidnapping scheme for a private conversation as either blatant witness tampering or cooperating witness grilling a target for Mueller. Both may be true. That is it. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that was an amazing story. I think that is story of the week, that Woolsey was called in and had an extended conversation with Trump at the White House. Now, Woolsey, as you might recall, is the person who turned in General Michael Flynn for meeting with the Turks and supposedly discussing abducting Fethullah Gulen, the, the opposition of, uh, of Erdogan in Turkey, for a cool $15 million. If, if Trump brought him in to give him a little talking to, uh, since he's already met with the independent counsel, I'm sure, uh, then that's witness tampering. At the same time, Mueller could want Woolsey to go in and see what Trump has to say. Which wow. Which would be witness tampering. <laughs> oh, my tampering. God. And because this is stupid Watergate, Trump probably is dumb enough to do it, right? You know, absolutely. I really do believe that he feels if he calls Woolsey in, Woolsey will pull his punch, the Fatula Goulet conspiracy will go away. This is just insane. He really does not know that he is up against career lawyers who know what they're doing, and they're going for blood. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I and I don't know. Obviously, you were the first one out there, Michael, saying you think Flynn has flipped. Uh, well, obviously, you know, we know now that he is not. Co- they're not cooperating with the White House lawyers anymore. That they have met with Mueller. Where do you have a, a, a guess where we're at in this process? Well, yeah. You, you know, I think I've made that prediction on Joy Reid last February that Flynn would be the first guy. He has so much to lose. I mean, he has his military pension. He has his medical privileges. Uh, his family members are now implicated. They could go to jail as well. The only question is, is he going to jail for conspiracy against the United States, Foreign uh, Registration Practices Act, for a potential kidnapping and abduction of a U.S. resident? I mean, he's got a million things. Where I think they are is they are pressuring him on the money. That's the money he took from Russia today the money he took from Turkey, and they're pretty much going to just hang potential abduction charges, federal and state, for him planning to kidnap this guy, Fatula Gulen. And they're going to squeeze in from there, and as they said, I think it was uh, Renato um, Mariotti, the, uh, the, the, the legal analyst, who said Mueller is not going to be satisfied with just a small plea deal. He will want to kick it up. And he will want him and Norm Eisenhower to it. Yeah. They will want him to talk about whoever was above him that gave him orders to all of these things. Which right. is either Trump or Bannon or Kushner or John Jr. Most likely Trump. Yeah. Um, wow. Speaking of Flynn, these stories, you've heard that you've seen the headline today. Flynn's White House allies continue to push shady Middle East nuclear deal months after he was ousted. This is was worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Right. Uh, I mean, uh, what's his uh, Arnold, uh, Arnold, uh, Army Colonel Derek Harvey, who was hired by Flynn uh, as Trump's top Middle East advisor, kept the shady nuclear deal alive until his own ouster in July. He was pushed out by McMaster. And that, so then this guy returned to the staff of Representative Devin Nunes. I mean, of course. Right. You know what? Anytime you hear that someone has been called before the House Intelligence Committee at this point, just discount it. You're not going to find anything. Nunes. He is there to protect Trump. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some point he's caught up into the special counsel investigation to the point where he obstructs justice. But this nuclear deal was amazing. They were pushing 24, the sale and building of 
24 nuclear power plants around the Middle East, and they were going to be built by a Russian firm, <laughs> Utter, you know, managed by Americans. For them to have brought that into the White House is a violation of so many laws. You know, I, you're going to have to go get a legal analyst for that. That's we, just uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Malcolm, how concerned should we be about this North Korean uh, missile, missile launch? Um, I don't know why I was not uh, soothed by Trump saying, we'll take care of it, it's a situation we'll handle. Which is kind of what he says about it. He's going to send his boys over to fight? Right. Yeah, oh, well, sure, that's what he meant. Yeah, well, go ahead. There's, no, there's nothing he can do. There is literally nothing he can do short of starting the second Korean War and causing the murder you know, and, and death of tens of thousands of people. It's not a million people in the first week of combat. There is literally nothing he can do. North Korea is now in nuclear power. They have ballistic missile systems, which have the throw weight capacity to strike the United States. And, you know, this isn't something which has happened overnight. This has been going on since 1954. North Korea has been striving to gain parity against the West. Now, instead of doing the proper thing, which is harnessing the global power to strangle North Korea off or to bring them to the table or... You know, I mean, he was talking a, a, a month or so ago that he would have no problem talking to Kim Jong-un, that he can negotiate with this guy. Well, here you go. Here's your circumstance. Now, unfortunately, he tends to insult everyone that he wants to do business with, and no one does business with him. Right. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, Malcolm, you tweeted about, we've talked about this before, that obviously there are so many of us that feel like, oh, my God, we cannot let this guy have the nuclear launch codes for one day more. What is going on with Mueller? Um, but, but you talk about, you tweeted this level of kooky talk is why Infowars style impeachment porn is peddled for money by frauds like uh, Louise Mensch is who you've been, you've been, you've been Twitter feuding. <laughs> not, not only with Julian Assange, but yeah, go ahead. Let me tell you about this, because there's, there's a lot of people who are liberals, as many as 200,000, who are liberals, progressives, who, who believe all of this stuff from Louise Mensch. And people say, you know, why do you comment on it? Why is this is beneath you? Let's just get Trump. There are literally conservatives. She's a conservative um, who are friends of Milo Yiannopoulos, which is what she is, uh, who supposedly had come into the quote-unquote resistance in order to mislead them with all this crazy, crazy impeachment porn cookie talk that Orrin Hatch is going to be president, that Trump has already been sentenced to death. There are people out there who so believe this information. They have blocked 660,000 people in the resistance. And now why does that matter? When on their block list, block everyone so if you follow malcolm nance at twitter you get blocked by everyone that follows malcolm nance yeah. so this is ridiculous this is dangerous and also her job is to make us look crazy well mission accomplished because mm -hmm. she has a quarter of a million people who believe her nuttiness and yeah. you know what my job is to call the shots as they are i don't care you know what her status is or what my stature is my job is to make sure people get accurate information. Watch MSNBC. We are not Russian spies, by the way. She keeps saying that, that Joy Reid and I are Russian spies. And, you know, watch the mainstream media because that's where all the real truth yeah. are coming from. Well, I, you know, I think we're all so exhausted and terrified by this uh, quote-unquote presidency. But, you know, Malcolm, um, Nancy Pelosi is doing San Francisco Sexy Liberal with us on Saturday. And... Listen, you and I both love our Maxine Waters, and we love our impeachment talk. <laughs> we realize what a, what a traitor and a clear and present danger he is. But, you know, I also understand how his leader, you know, she's got to wait till Mueller's done. Because otherwise she looks like, you know, then we all look like we're, you know, rushing to judgment for, for whatever of his base remains, right? Well, you know, this is, people have this mindset of towards impeachment and the Mueller investigation sort of the way hostages have it when they're first abducted, right? I'm going to be out by Christmas. And like we used to teach in the military hostage survival school, never fix dates in your mind. Yeah. There's enough awesome news coming from the mainstream media every day that gives you all the indicators you need to know where this thing is going. And it isn't going someplace where people are going to walk. People are going to prison. Papadopoulos was the first guy to confess and, and plead guilty. 
Yeah. So just imagine where Manafort, Flynn, all the reps are going to go. Yeah. Take it easy. It's going to happen, but we can't avert some things. You know, the process must yep. take place. Yep. You, uh, you, in fact, you had the tweet that made me the happiest ever. <laughs> It just said Hillary Clinton did not lose fair and square, and some people mm-hmm. are going to go to prison to prove my point. I mean, yeah. period, right? I mean, we're going to, I, I think, you know, we, it's so funny, we can only use the word tip of the iceberg so many times, because this is, this is a big tip on the iceberg, uh, isn't it, already? Yeah, I mean, look, this is empirical fact, okay? Hillary Clinton did not have a level playing field. And I don't care which, you know, if I was back in my old five days and Somebody says, we want you to watch the government of Rwanda. And I saw these exact same facts lay out. That would be the analysis. Because yep. a level playing field is one in which 150 million people saw impressions that were developed by Russian intelligence against Hillary Clinton. All right? That's not a level playing field. She still got 3 million more votes. Yep. So we're going to find out, you know, the culpability of people involved in this. If there were Americans involved, well then, you know, would Chipper of Justice is there to take uh, action? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. That was just, I just had, I just, it was just a little happy thought for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was saying, uh, Malcolm, I finished reading her book on the plane and I thought, she said one thing that, uh, you know, I know you know to be true and I thought it's so interesting now with him back on the birther stuff and the Access Hollywood tape isn't real that you feel like something big is coming and she said Putin lies the same way and for the same reason Trump does to exert power over truth itself, right? Absolutely. And this is, this is why I'm sort of on a mini jihad against, you know, people who are put, patently putting out fake news. We cannot be like info wars. We cannot be like Trump by coming out and just lying to whatever the outcome you want is. Right. Stick to data. Stick to the mainstream media. They're, I mean, the Washington Post and the New York Times are like, must read TV, you know, uh, must see TV. And so we have to understand that the opposition uh, is literally trying to alter reality. They're doing perception management warfare. And we have to stick to truth, stick to the facts, and, you know, deal with the world as it really is. Mm-hmm. That being said, are we there yet, Daddy? How close do you think we are? <laughs> I'm sticking. I am sticking to my, my March uh, prognostication that I made last June, 10 months. And it will hit. It will hit. But I'm uh, not impeachment. Impeachment can take up to a year. But I think by March, so many senior people will have been indicted or have pled guilty. I'm certain Flynn at some point is going to plead guilty. Yep. Just yep. mark that down. Uh, remember what I said. He didn't have a SWAT raid, which means he's cooperating. Yep. So uh, he's going to. So Flynn and Flynn might be Flynn Jr. Plead to some lesser charges, uh, and then from there you have access to Steve Bannon. Jared Kushner, and my new favorite target now is Donald Trump Jr. Oh. He's appearing everywhere. Fantastic. He appears to be the director of Dirty Tricks. Yeah. Even Flynn's operations appear to be below him. So we're going to have to see where this all shakes out. Wow. Uh, you know. But hey, Steph, I will be in your studio next week if you're home. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, I'm fine. I was going to say, I, I, I believe everything you said, because I've seen a, your picture on Twitter uh, as Luke Skywalker, so I know that. <laughs> I'll get that Jedi Master nightbook. You are my Jedi Master. Oh, my God, I'll see you in the flesh next week. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Care. Bye, Malcolm. There he goes. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. It's a little heart palpitation.